first official visit to China after she comes into the role of state counselor and the foreign minister after the new government was being formed. Five days, that's mm -hmm. quite long. Yep. The first country she visits besides those ASEAN countries. Yep. So what does all of these mean together, the significance of this trip? Well, both sim symbolic and substantive. Symbolically, uh, she wants to send a signal that uh, the new government of Myanmar pays special attention, pay very great strategic importance to relationship with China. Although there, there have been some uh, speculations or rumors about a uh, troubled bilateral relation, uh, her first visit uh, make a very clear signal that's wrong. The true intention, true signal is the stability and the continuity mm. of the development of the bilateral relation by his uh, visit, the trend will be strengthened. Continuity, you're referring to very briefly, Mr. Yang, yep. before she came into office, during the gentle time? Uh, yes, uh, clearly, uh, both uh, Myanmar and China want to maintain the stability based on the long course of the bilateral relationship, mm. based on the long course of the policies from bo both sides. I so that's, that relates to the continuity say for both China or uh, Myanmar side, they need to continue the previous policies. Miss mm. Clapp, uh, what about that? Is that possible, uh, particularly at the time when you see if Miss Su Chi wants to do that? She really needs to exercise a high degree of pragmatism in the diplomacy. Yes, I think we will see a high degree of pragmatism. But she is, during the years of military governance, particularly the last 10 years, um, the re foreign relations with the great powers, Myanmar's foreign relations with the great powers, became skewed because of Western dissatisfaction with the military government. And I think Aung San Suu Kyi's main mission is to rebalance the, the country's relations with great powers so that they have equal equal weight. So there will be equal weight between China and the West and Russia and Japan and all the other uh, powers, center, mm. centers of power in the world. And I, don't, I think that means continuity for its relations with China. It mm. is not discontinuity, but it means a rebalancing of Myanmar's relations with the rest of the world. Mm. And we will see that uh, playing out very soon because she's going from China to the United States, to the UN, to Canada, and so forth. Yeah, we'll see how it's going to unveil her thoughts on the country's diplomacy. Having said that, though, Mr. Lim, coming from Singapore, of course, uh, one of the important points of diplomacy for Ms. Suu Kyi is also Myanmar's relations with the ASEAN countries. Some were suggesting Myanmar could be a game changer Others uh, were saying, well, may not necessarily be. What is your opinion, given her first trip to China already? <coughs> yes, uh, <coughs> this is a very uh, signific significant visit because uh, it has been mentioned uh, in the international media that this is a visit to a major power. And the previous guest has also mentioned this is uh, also a visit that commensurates with uh, the uh, Myanmarese uh, government's attempt uh, to uh, be able to fr be friendly to all major powers uh, in the world. And uh, before uh, visiting uh, China, uh, Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi has also visited uh, Southeast Asian countries like uh, Thailand. So this is uh, really a uh, sort of uh, attempt to reach out uh, to uh, the important neighbors uh, of uh, Myanmar and also to reach out to the major powers <laughs> Uh, in the region, <coughs> uh, and uh, China is one of these uh, important neighboring uh, major powers uh, to Myanmar. Mm, yes, indeed. Uh, uh, we have been talking about this trip for quite some time because the Chinese of our last trip to China, which was before the election, uh, it was in the months of June, right before, five months before the November election, she came over here and certainly had some good discussions with the Chinese leaders. Eventually, her party won the election and she mm -hmm. became the state counselor.
But this time, of course, she's coming in with much bigger capacity. Yep. She is thinking about streamlining the whole national policy, whether it's diplomacy or economic uh, development. Uh, Mr. Yang, two points. One, it seems that Mr. Suu Kyi is going to ask the help and support from China mm -hmm. about domestic peace process. Yep. Secondly, she's also likely to discuss with China about the future of her grand economic plan, even yep. though some argue it is quite bland. Um, whether grand or bland, that certainly needs some kinds of investment coming from all over the region. Mr. Yang, how much do you think she will be satisfied, quote unquote, mm -hmm. this time? Well, actually, you are touching on both of the fundamental challenges facing the new government. And she really wants to uh, get help from China on both of the issues. Uh, but uh, uh, compared with the peaceful process, China can play bigger roles in the economic front rather than the peace process. Let's talk about peace process, <laughs> if yeah. it is difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so let's put on the difficult point first. Uh, there has been a lot of talk about China's possible influence on one of those armed ethnic groups uh, directed by the ethnic Chinese, Kou Kang, but it's only ethnic Chinese. It's yeah. someone in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, suggesting the border issue could also be one between China and Myanmar. How much China would have a say on this issue, given its domestic affairs of Myanmar? And also, we saw the 21st century so-called uh, Pangdong meeting is coming over at the end of this month. Uh, how much can be achieved during Mr. Suu Kyi's visit? To some degree, China is in dilemma. That's why I said it's a very difficult mm. issue for China. What because is dilemma? Um, China has insisted on the long time is long, a uh, non-professional principle. So basically, the peace process in Myanmar is a domestic issue in Myanmar. However, it really relates to a lot of uh, ethnic Chinese in Myanmar. So we are in a dilemma. Uh, however, China can play a positive role as a facilitator or informal uh, mediator among groups. Mm. Uh, but I think that is most. I think the keys lies in the uh, confrontational groups rather than lies in the China. What China can do is just create a peaceful environment, mm. create a good uh, political atmosphere to facilitate uh, for talks. Uh, so we don't uh, intervene. We don't want to intervene the internal uh, internal uh, affairs. However, we will s strongly oppose any efforts for military solution. All right. uh, so that's, the I think, China, China's position. Uh, Ms. Clapp, it is no secret that China has been very vocal about supporting the peace process going on in Myanmar uh, over the past uh, few months. Uh, also, Chinese uh, Foreign Minister Wang Yi, last time during his visit there, he said it very clearly once and again. Having said that, though, um, how much do you think Ms. Suu Kyi this time as state councillor will be able to help Myanmar bringing on a peace process among all its ethnic groups. Once again, we look at the calendar. August the 31st, that will be the so-called the 21st century uh, Panlong meeting, which is supposed to be all the armed ethnic groups in Myanmar come together. Will that be solved during this part of her China trip? No, the peace, the peace process is going to be a very, very long process. Mm. And the Panglong Conference later this month will just be the beginning of a new phase in that conference, in, in that co process. Um, the last government, the Thane Sein government, concentrated on the ceasefire agreement. With Panglong, we're going to see the process move into a much wider group, uh, including not only the armed groups, including the Tutmadaw, the National Army, and the ethnic armed groups, but also political leaders, and there'll be some civil society there. It will be a very large conference, and it will begin to deal with some fundamental political and, and, and other issues that have been plaguing relations between the ethnic groups and the majority. Um, I think China plays a very important role here because several of the major armed groups are right there on the border and relate to China very directly because 
there are similar groups in China. Mm -hmm. And China has very uh, strong influence on these groups. And so the fact that the Wa and the Mola and so forth have agreed to go to Panglong is really a plus for China. China will get credit for having encouraged them in that direction. Mm -hmm. And I think she'll probably be grateful for that. All right, Mr. Yang, I want to come back to you very briefly mm -hmm. from you as well. Uh, we have seen some issues between China and Myanmar. For example, uh, a few months ago, uh, one Myanmar airplane uh, from the Air Force mm -hmm. mistakenly bombed a sugar field uh, over the border of China and, of course, uh, killed several individuals over there. But certainly that was a mistake and the two sides have already come to an ag uh, agreement in a way about the nature of it. And oh, you also see uh, that the Myanmar government has come to realize that the interactions between the Chinese side and those from the Myanmar side when it comes to the ethnic groups are mainly individual interactions rather than governmental and uh, uh, over border approaches. So. Uh, what do you make of these mixed signals and events between China and Myanmar considering security, considering domestic peace process? Well, it's a really mixed the challenges. Uh, on one hand, uh, uh, China has to help uh, Myanmar to solve the uh, military confrontations between the local forces and the government. But on the other hand, China really have uh, serious concerns about the security both for our own and the ethnic Chinese over there. Yeah. That's why we, uh, I said we strongly oppose any kind of a military solution. And we will try every effort to facilitate all the groups to get together through the peaceful process. Mm. And certainly it is not just politics. It is also economy, uh, as we say, that one of the most important things on Mr. Ms. Su Chi's agenda. One of Ms. Su Chi's uh, focus of the visit is bilateral trade between China and Myanmar. China, the largest source of foreign investment for Myanmar over the years. Up to July this year, Chinese investment in Myanmar has reached beyond the 25 billion U.S. dollars, taking up about 40% of the total foreign investment in the country. China is also the largest trading partner of Myanmar, making up one third of Myanmar's total trade volume. And those are just some of the numbers uh, when it comes to trade and economic development between the two countries. The question is, Ms. Clapp, before I go to Mr. Lim, let me ask you once again, how much will Ms. Su Chi be able to achieve her goals of having more Chinese investment in Myanmar, we still got some issues about the compromise. We still got some issues about the dam project. Yes, there are many issues. But there are many issues because China is such a big investor in Myanmar. There's no question that there is a future for a large future for Chinese investment in Myanmar. The, the challenge for China is going to be to make that investment work for the people of Myanmar and not just for China. Right now, the perception in Myanmar among the people is that Chinese investment is for China's, uh, China's benefit and not their benefit. So mm -hmm. China's challenge is, is, is going to be working with uh, Aung San Suu Kyi's government to make sure that their projects meet the needs of the people. All right. Uh, Mr. Lim, what do you make of it? Because uh, when you look at the ASEAN economies, including that of Myanmar, uh, bilateral trade has been a very active factor in the relations. But still, uh, it's not necessarily going to mean everything is going to be peaceful and wonderful. There are always issues that have to be worked on. And Mr. Lim, what do you make of it, the possibilities? Uh, there appears to be uh, three items on the agenda. Mm. The first item is the Asian Development Bank has identified the need for US $60 billion worth of uh, loans and aids that's needed to modernize uh, Myanmar's electricity supply. And so uh, China can possibly play a role in this. Second uh, item that is uh, mentioned is uh, the fact about infrastructure particularly transportation infrastructure. And uh, China uh, also can play a role in this, particularly since uh, China is pushing the One Belt, One Road and the AIIB uh, Infrastructure Bank. 
And so these uh, two avenues offer possibilities for both uh, China and Myanmar to talk and uh, come to a certain win-win situation based on their national needs and priorities. So they need, uh, this would be a very good opportunity for the two leaders to come together to talk. And as the previous guest has mentioned, uh, uh, when uh, the talk goes on, it is important for uh, both sides to assess how China can help the local communities that are uh, situated along these highway routes, mm. as well as uh, the third item, which is hydropower uh, dam project, how uh, China can help and benefit the local communities and how the Myanmarese government can uh, maximize benefits for local communities based on their priorities. Right. So it is, uh, as you have mentioned uh, earlier on, uh, China is a major trader and an investor and therefore there's a much uh, potential for uh, possibilities for cooperation. Mr. Yang, having said that though, China and Myanmar both have realized, and they said it openly as well to the international community, that the deals have to be mutually beneficial and yep. it has to be win-win. That's the basic line of doing trade anyway. Yep. Uh, so on the one hand, China could contribute. On the other hand, how is the Chinese government going to guarantee the rights and also the respons social responsibilities mm -hmm. of enterprises, of oh, the yes. business community? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a really big, uh, big question for Chinese investors and Chinese enterprises because of uh, past uh, several uh, failed cases or bad stories. Uh, so I think by this uh, summit or visit, uh, the top level visit, uh, both sides will touch on this very concrete issue because that is uh, issue relating to the investors' confidence, That's right. uh, the uh, status of the commercial uh, activities. These in have Myanmar. become samples oh, yeah. as to which direction the bilateral trade the uh, cooperation is going. Yeah, so uh, that's not an uh, issue relating to individual projects. It's an issue of the total environment, total mm. atmosphere, total uh, conditions for business, for doing business in Myanmar. And the Myanmar government really uh, desperately need the foreign investors and the foreign uh, commercials flood in. Mm. But without a solution or good solution to the confidence, to the fear, uh, they cannot achieve what they want. Mm. One of the things, Mr. Yang, I really want you to share some light very briefly on this. Politics in Myanmar has changed mm -hmm. from before the election to mm -hmm. after the election. Yeah. And of course, Ms. Su Chi and her <coughs> party goal, it has also switched from yeah. winning in the election to governing a country and making sure there's plan, there's also ways to implement the plans for the country's future. Mm -hmm. So how much will that, in a way, impact on the ways of thinking when it comes to business with China? And how much of that will, in a way, make the two countries thinking about the fundamentals mm -hmm. when it comes to economic and trade development? For China's perspective, ideally, uh, the changes is inevitable in uh, Myanmar, but the changes uh, should be focused in the uh, political structure. Mm. But the economic uh, atmosphere, the pro business uh, atmosphere, should be maintained, even improved. That's uh, what we hope. And uh, through the political reforms and uh, economic reconstruction, I think the environment for investment will be better. We'll see. And before we go, I want to one sentence from the other two panelists each. Uh, what is your expectations for this trip and how is that likely to impact your country's relations with Myanmar? Uh, Ms. Clapp, shall we go with you first, very briefly? Okay, I, I think this will be a very important visit <clears throat> because it will be her first visit uh, where she is responsible basically for the government. So it will be the beginning of, of mm. the relationship between Myanmar and China for this uh, administration in Myanmar. Uh, as far as the U.S. is concerned, we, we certainly expect her to be visiting China before she makes visits elsewhere in the world because China is All her right. largest neighbor. All right, I see. And it's perfectly uh, fine with the United States. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lim, what do you think, briefly, from you? Uh, this visit 
uh, is uh, very important because it can set the tone uh, for lower level visits uh, by uh, bureaucrats and politicians on both sides. It can also set the overall tone for uh, the bilateral relations for decades uh, to come. And uh, many uh, in uh, ASEAN countries uh, are expecting uh, or uh, have uh, cer certain hopes uh, that uh, relationships uh, can be uh, stable and peaceful and that right. uh, cooperative uh, trade deals as well as infrastructure building can uh, persist and sustain.